Hello, fellow flower painters. Today I'm going to show you some easy ways to do a few leaves and some color combinations that might work for you. For acrylics, I would recommend an ultramarine blue and some type of a light yellow. And for Winsor Newton colors, I like to use indenthrine blue and transparent yellow, and that will give you this kind of a grayed green. This is my shadow green. It's the only one I know that I can use straight out of the tube, and it is a mission gold color. Prussian blue and transparent yellow work fine together. Burnt Sienna and Antwerp Blue works great together. And Ultramarine Blue and Transparent Yellow work great. Or Ultramarine Blue and New Gamboge work fine too. So basically what we're doing is taking a very dark blue and mixing a little bit of yellow into it. The way that I brighten my leaves is to put straight yellow on them first. Or I can paint a leaf and then if I decide I want it brighter, I could add a layer of yellow to it after it's painted. So what we're going to start with is just a very simple shaped leaf. And the way I draw my leaves is to draw the vein line first as a curve. And then I'll draw the outside shape on both sides. Now the curve is kind of important. This is a little shaded leaf that I did with a pencil. Drew the vein line first then the outside lines, and then I shaded in what I call my ditch area. Now the ditch area goes above the curve, so it goes right in here. And for me, that's almost always a dark area. And then the outside edge is darker, and then the outside edge is darker here. And what happens is it allows the leaf to have some uh, a rolling effect. In other words, some areas will be lighter, some will be darker. And let me show you what I mean. First of all, I'm going to wet half of the leaf with water. And I'm wetting the area that is above the curve line in the center. See how that's the curve line? This is above it. And then I'm going to take my dark green or mix and I'm going to apply that into the ditch area. And I apply it wider at the back and taper it about three quarters of the length of the leaf. I didn't come all the way to the outer edge. And then I'm going to take and put the dark mix at the outside edge of the petal all the way to the tip. Now I pretty much use this technique on almost all of my leaves. And then I'm going to take the water out of my brush, spread the brush out, and pull the edge of that color out so that it gradually forms different values. It leaves it lighter in this area. And do you see how it makes it look rounded there? Okay. Now I'm going to take the flat brush and just with a almost dry brush clean up that little edge. And I don't always do that, but I smeared it a little bit. So when I do it, I will smear it. Straighten up that dark ditch area and I'll leave that set until it's dry and then I'll come back and complete the other area. Now what I can do while it is drying is take a good flat brush that has a nice chisel edge and by a chisel edge I mean that if you stand it up straight it's almost like a razor shape and what I'm going to do with that is come back and create some veins. And I'm giving them a slight curve to show more dimension to the leaf. And continue. I'll wipe my brush off 
as it starts to pick up paint. And then I'll continue on. Okay. Then I'm going to let that dry, and when it's dry, I'll come back and finish this side. Now, say I wanted to have a leaf where I knew I was going to have have it in an area where I wanted it to be more colorful or brighter, then I would simply put a wash of probably a yellow color on it. And when I'm doing that, I'm also wetting the paper. Then I would pick up my darker little drier pigment this time because the paper is already wet and I'd start to put my color into the ditch area and along the outside edge. And I'm going to flatten out my, spread out my brush and start to pull the color inward. Just trying to keep some of that warm color in there showing. And then I'll turn it a little bit and spread my brush and flatten it and pull the darker color out that way. Get a very pretty leaf that way. And then I will lift out my veins. Okay. This time, I'm also going to lift out a center vein. And I can't lift it out too close to this line. So I'm going to go slightly above that line, and it makes it look like there is a vein raising up in that area. And I am going to go back and straighten that just a little bit. And while that's drying, Pull some of this pigment out and make a little stem out there. Now my next step is to come in and wet this side and apply the dark along this outside edge. But it's still not quite dry, so I'm going to let it sit a few more minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you some leaves that are tall and thin, and these leaves are great, and I use them a lot on flowers uh, like daffodils, tulips, anything that has an elongated leaf on it. And what I do is I apply my color like this and leave a lot of spaces, and then with water on my brush, just, uh, let me say, about 50% of the water has been removed, and so I'm carrying a little water back. And then I'll come in and I'll start to soften the color around by moving the brush with water on it. And you can see how it blends in and softens the color. Now when I'm doing several of them in a cluster, I'll just work with different colors on each group. So I'm going to do a couple down here. And I'll start with my shadow green and apply it. I think I'll apply it on the back side of this one. And at the bottom, if I'm at the bottom of the page, I'll go across like that. And then I'll start to chisel those colors up. Like so, leaving spaces.
something like that. Then I'll take my brush and take all the water out of it, or half of the water out of it, sorry. And then come in and just chisel back and forth some more with that brush. And I don't have to really fill all the spaces, but connect the color a little bit better. And that will leave some light areas and you'll have some dark areas. Now while it's wet, if you wanted to darken, say the bottom of it, or add more color back into it, you can still do that as long as it's wet. And then I take the dry brush and come in and chisel with the dry brush just to stretch out the color a little bit. That's a nice one. Okay. And on this one, I, ha I always have the option of putting the yellow on top or underneath. So if I'm going to put it on top, I'll wait until it completely dries. But to keep you from sitting here watching me do nothing, I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow on it right now. And then do the green. Okay, there's just a little bit. up some green. This time maybe we'll make it a little bit lighter. It looks darker when it goes on, but it will be a little lighter. Over like that at the bottom. Okay. Now I'm not even going to carry any water this time. I just pinch the color out of my brush and I'm just going to use the wetness of the paper to chisel these colors back and forth and intentionally leave some of that yellow show and sometimes I, I even leave the uh, white paper show and that creates a different value and a slightly different look. Now if it looks too pale uh, and the yellow and um, this one didn't get real strong, so when it's dry, I'll come back and put another wash of yellow on it. I also, as I said before, I can come back in with my dark and darken at the base, pinch the water out of my brush and the color, and stretch the color up a little more. Okay, very nice. I think I'm going to get these dry, all of them, and show you a couple more things. Now I'm going to wet this, or just dampen it. And I have to turn it. So I like to aim my brush toward the outside edge of the area that I'm painting, or to the line that I've drawn. And I'm going to aim my brush there with the dark along the outside edge this time. And if you have any tears or raggedness to the edge of your leaf, this is the time to indicate those. Again, Spread out your brush. And pull your color inward. My paper is 90 pound paper and I normally don't work on it except to demonstrate on it and it's very, uh, it buckles a lot. That's why I usually use 300 pound paper. So hopefully you will be using 300 pound paper. Okay, now I'm going to take and go in the opposite direction of my veins. See, I went this way here, 
So now I will go in in this direction and I don't really care if they line up exactly but I want them to look like they're they have a little curve to them and they don't have to come all the way up and touch that area either. This is just a basic leaf shape that I use a lot because it's simple and it says leaf so that's all I really want to do is tell my viewer there's a leaf there and I don't really make the leaves too important unless they're in the focal area and that's when I will make them brighter and this one I didn't put yellow on it so I'll put it on it when it's dry just so you can see there there's a slight difference uh, between when it's dry and when it's wet and you can see it's quieter when it's it doesn't have the yellow on it a little bit brighter so it gets a little more exciting in your design which is why that's when I use it in the focal area okay so I'm going to do the same thing on here and this time I'll make it a little bit lighter and the way I make it lighter is to put more watered paint on it and I control the values by the amount of water I use and if I want a lighter value I use more water in my application of color because that puts a lighter value on. So then I'm going to lift my veins Got something like that. Okay. The other way to lift your veins is to um, to do it with a stylus. I'm gonna quickly just coat a little leaf shape here for you. I need to make it a little darker. And what happens when you use a stylus is that you dent the paper. And I might just do this side too, the whole thing at once. I'm just kind of pushing it around and trying to do it all at once just to show you a little quicker way to do it maybe. So this is my stylus and what I'll do is I'll run a vein like so. You see how it's gotten darker and then I'll make some outside veins come in this way. And what happens is the indentations make the paint run into the dents and it creates a darker look. So it's just an alternative way to do, create a little interest in your leaf. Now on this one, I said I'd put some yellow on it so you can see what it looks like. Well, I can even do it here since I have the yellow on there already. So you can see how it looks when you put it on top of it. And it will brighten it up a little bit. So 
So you see you can do it either before or after. Here I'll do it on this one. Leaves can be lots and lots of colors. Uh, sometimes if you wanted brown leaves, you could use the Antwerp blue and burnt sienna and lean it to the brown side with mostly burnt sienna in it. And that gives you a nice rust colored leaf. And uh, sometimes if I want a very um, young looking leaf, I will do a wash of yellow and then use cobalt blue and a little yellow and keep it lighter. And it also keeps it a little bit brighter. So play around with your greens and get a good mix that you, you like to use often that's easy for you to mix. And then try some different leaf shapes. Try lifting some veins. Try making some streaks in it. And if you can find a nice, easy way that works for you, it makes flower painting lots more fun because you can focus most of your energy on the flowers. But know that if you want to make the leaves lighter, use um, more water in your mix. If you want to make them look brighter, use yellow along with your green or either under it or over it. Okay? Have fun and enjoy painting leaves and many, many flowers.